Hi guys! In today's video, I am finally <laughs> going to be talking about the topic that I promised my friend Ember months ago, which is um, basically she wanted to know how to import like a video reference as a plane into Blender to animate alongside with using Everstar. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. And to start off with, I've prepared a commission that I actually did using this exact technique. Um, and it's it's a lot, but, you know, don't let it scare you. Uh, here it is. So um, as you can see, I have this plane here, which is of a girl performing, I guess, a TikTok dance. And if I scrub through the timeline, you can see that the avatars animate with her. Now, the reason I've done two versions is because she wanted one version with the talking, one version without, but um, the principle is the same. So I'm not going to show you exactly, you know, frame for frame how I do it, but I'm going to give you some tips and tricks um, to do with the timeline, to do with exporting settings, as well as the actual import of the clip. So I can close this for now. And I'll start in a blank canvas. Now, I have my Blender set up that it doesn't have anything in the default scene. So like the cube and the camera and whatever. Um, but you can just press A on your keyboard and then delete and it'll delete everything. Um, because we're not going to be using any of that stuff. But to start off with, um, if you don't know how to install Avastar, then I would suggest going and checking out my previous video on how to do poses in Blender and I will link that in the description and in that video I basically explained how to actually install the plugin for Avastar. Um, so once you've done that come back to this video. <laughs> uh, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an avatar into the scene by pressing shift A and going to Avastar which if you've installed it, installed it correctly will show up over here and then complete. And the reason I put the avatar in first is so that I can, you know, scale the uh, video alongside it to how I want it to be. So now that we have the avatar in the scene, I'm going to switch out of pose mode into object mode. And I'm going to just click in the scene to deselect the bones. Um, you can also click over here on collection, just the, you know, the overarching folder of the avatar. And then I'm going to navigate in my files to the video clip that I want to use. Now, you can use GIF formats. You can use MP4 formats. I think you can also use .mov movie formats. But I generally will take a clip from TikTok or from YouTube and just use a YouTube to MP4 converter or that sort of a thing just to pump out an MP4 format. Uh, generally, I find that to be the... I guess, easiest to work with, on Windows at least. So let me just navigate to that. Here we go. So this is the reference video that I used for the example that I showed you. And to get this into Blender, you simply drag and drop it into the scene. And voila. Now, if your camera is at an angle, obviously it's going to import weirdly. And to fix that, you just click on it and press Alt-R for rotation and Alt G for location. And then I'm going to rotate it as needed by pressing R, X and 90 and enter. And then I'm going to click on this preset viewpoint. And now I can simply drag it around and scale it as needed so it fits the size of the avatar. Now obviously it doesn't need to be perfect, but it just makes it easier to zoom in in the viewport to kind of see what you're doing. And then by default, Blender has this extra little panel at the bottom here, and I'm going to enlarge that, same as I did in my pose tutorial, to open up the timeline. And now I can click back on the video, and I'm going to go, where is it? Here, to the data tab, and it tells you how many frames it has. Now, obviously, it has more than that, so I would recommend, in your video panel, finding out how many frames you actually have. And to do that, 
you calculate the length times the frame rate. So there's 30 frames per second, and the length is 10 seconds. So if I open my calculator, that is 30 times 10, which is, oh, I mean, that's easy to do. But if you had something more complicated, obviously you'd use a calculator, uh, which is 300. So here I will input 300 and enter. And now if I zoom out, you can see that it plays the whole video. Now, obviously, because this is a TikTok video, it has that TikTok little ending screen at the end. And to cut that out, you just find out where the last frame is. Here, 182. And you set this to 182. And if you want to make it easier to loop it, then here in the timeline where it says start and end, you also set this to 182. And now, if I go back to the beginning and I press play, you will see that it plays the whole video. And then it'll loop again from right at the beginning. And this is what I would recommend as your sort of setup configuration at the beginning of your project before you actually start animating. It'll just make things a lot easier. And you will want to make sure that this start frame is the same as here, because obviously this is going to import by default at whatever frame you're on. By default, I think it's on frame one, so that's where it starts. And then the same as in my pose tutorial, you are just going to go into pose mode and start posing your bones. Now, obviously, it's easiest if you turn on this auto keying, which, um, again, I explained in my posing tutorial, but basically what it does is it sets it so that if you make a change, let me open this here. If you have a keyframe, let me just keyframe everything, and then you move forwards and you move a keyframe, Oh, I have to actually activate it. <laughs> and you move a keyframe, uh, a bone, sorry. It'll automatically key that for you. So what you would do is you would go through and you would obviously animate it in time with the video. And then when you are done, you go over to this tab the render tab, you go all the way down. And if it has this export avatar action origin animated bad thing, you just select A for all and you uncheck that and the origin will be gone. And now if you reselect everything, you will see that that is fixed. Now, my recommendation, if you're doing commissions, is to create one looped version and one single playthrough version. Because generally speaking, Customers won't know 100% what they want, so you might as well give them both options. Now, for the priority, I would go up to four. I would not set it higher than four, because if you want to animate whilst, say, holding a prop from someone else, uh, chances are that prop is only set to priority five, maybe priority six. Um, and if you set your animation like if you're working on an AO, for example, to priority five, then it will override that and be really annoying, especially if you, for example, want to be walking around with a holding pose for a handbag. I know that I set my handbag priority poses, uh, pose priorities to five, because in my experience, when you go up to six, sometimes things get messed up, especially if there are facial animations involved. And then you're going to have to go to avatar health and underform avatar. And it's it's a nightmare to try and explain to, to customers. So priority four, if it's animated, if it's a static holding pose, priority five. Then the looping animation, make sure to set this to the actual length of the clip. If you haven't changed the length of this, this might not be what you actually want it to be. So make sure to set that. Then action export options, make sure to set the end frame to your actual end frame or it will only export up to frame two. FPS doesn't really matter in Second Life. If you want it to be the same speed as your original clip though, you are going to have to make sure that your FPS matches. So in this case, it would be 30. And then finally, compression, leave this alone. Easy knees out, I would leave alone. Uncheck apply armature scale because what that can do is when you 
input your animation, you play it on your avatar. If you have your avatar's height slider messed around with, if you have a really short avatar or a really tall avatar, that might squash them. And then you're going to have to, again, go to avatar health under full avatar, and it can be really annoying. Anyway, next, for these animations, they require so much more fiddling than static poses. So I would recommend, if you have access to the beta grid, then export them as anim files, and just, just leaving this on anim mode and then pressing export, and just saving it over and over and over again, overwriting it each time you need to make a change. I would recommend getting access to the beta grid. I can do a tutorial on that, but it can be a bit complicated if you're not pro. Anyway, if you don't have access to the beta grid, I would recommend using .bvh because you can preview a bvh file in Firestorm without actually uploading it, without actually paying the upload fee. And th I mean, it's a little bit glitchy, but it gives you a good idea of kind of what to expect. So on, for example, if you have a second monitor, you can open the original clip, the reference clip, and play it alongside at the same time as your clip in Second Life and make sure that, you know, the timing's right, etc. Um, but in BVH, the settings are a little bit different. Um, you don't have any priority settings. Those you set in Second Life and they are dreadful. I would always recommend uploading your final version as a .anim file because you get so much more control. But for the meantime, when you're uploading as a .bvh, just make sure that apply armature scale is unchecked, that the loop calculator is set all the way from the in point, which is 1, to the out point, which is 182, and that this hasn't changed. And then you should be fine. Now, as you can see, because we cut the clip a little bit, the runtime is only 6 seconds instead of 10. So just bear that in mind when you play your clip alongside. If you've trimmed off, I don't know, like an outro that maybe plays at the end of it or whatever, that your video on the side screen will continue to play. So you might want to, um, nowadays there's Clip Champ, so you might want to right click and edit with Clip Champ and just cut out that ending of your reference video. Now, when I did this back in, was it last year or the year before? I can't remember, but back when I did this, Clip Champ wasn't a thing yet, so uh, I didn't have that option, and I really didn't want to go into Premiere Pro just to cut out four seconds of a TikTok clip. Um, but now that we have Clip Champ, I would definitely recommend using it. Uh, again, if you need a tutorial on Clip Champ, I can do that too, although I would probably upload that as a short because it really wouldn't take longer than 60 seconds to explain. It's extremely straightforward. Uh, but yes, that basically concludes everything. Um, because of the unique way that Second Life works, I mean, slowly they're obviously modernizing it and this PBR update is a huge improvement and a step in the right direction. But because of how old fashioned Second Life is, sometimes the frame rate can screw up and not look how it's supposed to. So you might have to mess around with this for the speed. Alternatively, let me reopen my actual version of this. If you want to speed the whole thing up and you can't be bothered to mess around with frames per second because you're not good at maths like me, what you can do is you can press A in pose mode to select all your frames and then hover over the timeline and press A to select all the keyframes and you can scale them in. And they will scale, generally speaking, towards where this timeline is. So pr place it on your first one and then scale. And then you will see that it gets a lot faster. Just as a, you know, a little tip. Um, and of course, always remember that uh, to, to put this on. Now, one last little tidbit. I'm not a professional animator. Yes, I studied it at school, but it was not my forte because I actually specialized in environmental art. So most environmental things are static or have light swaying animations. And as a result, my animation techniques are not that refined. There are two different techniques for animating, namely straight ahead and pose to pose. Now, based on the quantity 
of keyframes I have here, you can tell that I animate a little bit dynamically in between the two, but mostly straight ahead. Now, pose to pose is a technique where you animate the high points of an animation. So let me hide Sora. There we go. And just play the video. And you can see that, for example, one high point would be her arm being here and then her arm being here. So that's a shift from the arm being here to there, as you can see. Now, what you would do with point, uh, pose to pose, sorry, pose to pose or point to point, it, it can be called both, is you would keyframe the first, you would keyframe the second, and then you notice her arm sways down a little bit in between. It's not just a straight ahead thing. Then you would have to go into the graph editor and edit the keyframes here. And it can look scary. Okay, I couldn't find anything good in my project because I said I'm not a professional and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but basically, it will usually look like this if you're working in the graph editor. And the way it works is by moving the keyframes up or down and changing this graph line, you can change whether or not the arm animates from point A to point B straight up, down, forwards, backwards, whatever. And it's a very detail-oriented way of doing it, and a lot of animation studios use this method. This is the more refined way of doing it. However, straight ahead is a lot easier if you're just getting into animation. And in Second Life, because Second Life is pretty low quality anyway, as far as reading keyframes and such, Straight ahead is honestly good enough. Yes, it's a little bit choppier. Like you can see, she's a little bit choppy. But, I'm, I mean, we're really not going for hyper-realism with Second Life. Unless, I don't know, you're in the AI community and you really want hyper-realistic avatars. But generally speaking, straight ahead is good enough. Where you just, you pick your big keyframe here, you keyframe that. Then you keyframe up, then you go across. What I would recommend doing is first keyframing the face because it's a lot harder to get the mouth to be in a straight line if the head is at an angle. So I would recommend animating the face first and then the body or doing the body and then the neck last so that the head doesn't, you know, move about. Um, but yes, other than that, Really, I, I can't tell you how to work. I would recommend doing straight ahead just because the graph editor can be very daunting. But if you're really passionate about animation and it's your, pa it, it, you know, it's your strength and your hobby and etc., then I would recommend maybe taking a, a short course or watching some YouTube videos on uh, point to point or key to key animation. Uh, but yes, that pretty much concludes today's video. Uh, if you have any other questions about it or anything else you want to see me do a video on, then please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.